All right. So you said that you do not want to get married. Not right now. Well, what is it? Not right now or not ever? Uh, I'm, I don't know. I'll just lie. Okay. So <laughs> right now, if I were to ask you right now, Lonnie, would you want to be married? Your answer is no. no but it no, sounds no. like it's subject to change maybe one day. Never or, say never. Never say never. Okay. But more so leaning towards no. No. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into <laughs> it. Uh, Why is that? Oh, Lord. I don't know. I feel like... um. Let me stop you right there. Let's go. I don't want to hear what you feel like. Okay. I want to hear what you see for what it is. You get me? I'm just I'm just giving you a little advice. People will take you more serious if you don't start with I feel, I feel like. like. Okay. I mean, so let me be let me be. Let me Shout be out to Professor Laurie at Bowie State. He taught me that. Shout out. Professor Laurie, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So listen. Mm -hmm. I am a very self-reflective person. I self-reflected. I, I feel like I'm young, you know. I don't, like, how I think about this and, and take this however you want it. But, you know, God made a beautiful, big old green earth, you know, and there's plenty of fish out here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, I don't like to subject my shit myself and my whole shit and everything to one person. At, at this time in my life, I feel like I'm young and... Let's go. Like, I'm not, like, focused on that. Now, if I meet that and that happens, well, let's go. Because I, I think I'm I'm learning how to be more affectionate. Like, I'm learning that love is okay. Because I, I don't want to say I didn't come from love because my mother, she loved me. She showed me that. Did you just not be raised in but a crazy affectionate I didn't, house? I, didn't re I was never raised in a house where, like, oh, wow, love is okay, maybe? Mm -hmm. Like, so. I, I always thought you had to go through all this hard shit to, you know, and, and, in your household, did you, your grandparents who raised you, right? Mm -hmm. Your siblings, did y'all say, I love you a lot? My mother in the household of my mother. Okay. But once you got to the grandparents, not as much. No. Okay. They were like that evil. Must, that must be an old school. Oh, okay. Well, I was <laughs> I was ready to compare it to mine. Mine aren't evil. Yeah, but I was yeah. already said that must be an old school thing because my grandparents were the same. Like they, even my mom said like growing up, she never like heard or saw them being crazy affectionate or whatnot. So maybe that's an old school thing, but yeah. continue. Yeah. I grew up in like a, a like, I always want to say like, I, I always have to like separate when, when I say I grew up. Mm -hmm. Cause like I said, the first half of my life before, when I was, before like my mother died, which was 16 years old. Okay. I felt really affectionate love. Like I felt like my mother just was like my biggest supporter. She was yeah. everything. When my mom died, we had to transition. Like me and my siblings have to transition our lives into like another life, which was like new school, new phone. Like don't, you would never have any friends that you knew back then. And like, this is your new life. Yeah. And it's just like going from like a love and affectionate situation from like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And toxic and plot and plotting and trifling type energy is like, and it turns you like, unfortunately, into a person of survival and defense to where like, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't trust you. Prove okay. yourself to me <clears throat> or else. And even if you still prove yourself to me, I still won't trust you. Okay. Yeah. So let me try to dissect this if I could. Yeah. Dr. Day. So <laughs> it sounds like based off of the... Uh, upbringings in the household of your grandparents. Mm -hmm. It was not affectionate. Um, you know, you you felt the the you how you call it the plotting that mm -hmm. came with it. You just felt the you know the sneaky shit that came with it. Hell yeah, that was complete opposite of what you were used to when being raised by your mom. Definitely. So because of what happened, how long did you live with your grandparents? For about three years. So those three years built a wall, if you would, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. I mean, it's just natural defense mechanisms for any living thing to defend off something yeah. that they're uncomfortable with. Definitely. So you built that wall, if you would, and it sounds like the wall is still up. But, mm -hmm. but if you come across something that reminds you of home in a sense of with your mom... Yeah. Then you'll go, okay, I'll give that a shot. Well, come on, Dr. Day. <laughs> Let's go. We in this motherfucker. All shit, right. I don't got to pay for therapy. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, shit. I mean, it kind of is. And then with the with the podcast that you want to do, it will be a form of therapy because you're bringing real <laughs> shit Definitely. to life. You'll have someone yeah. in the church world who recognizes the toxic shit that happens into it. And when he or she comes along and y'all talk about that, 
they've been wanting to get that off their chest for, for years. years. It's like let's let's talk about it. And they had no one to come to until you. So you you yourself will realize that you will be a, in a way a therapist as well. Damn. Um, but no, that's that's very common. Yeah, that's very common. Mm -hmm. Uh, very common. So, have you gone to therapy? No. Okay. Well, I recommend it first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But that is very common. Just to be in that world, like our household, definitely shows up in the dating world. Definitely. Like in how wow. we treat the opposite sex, like yes. one thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're good though, because it's crazy. Yeah, I'm yeah. I think you'll be good. You got a good head on your shoulders or whatnot. I just think it'll. I just ask this of you, Lonnie. Mm -hmm. I just ask this. I just ask that. When that time does come mm -hmm. where you meet a guy, um, I just ask that, you know, really, first off, break it down to him, your circumstances. Yeah. So that he can be understanding and maybe he'll be a little bit more patient, but don't push him away because of your past experiences. Right. And that's, and that's you know, like you can hear that and be like, okay, I won't. But it's, I've seen it so many fucking times. Yeah. Whether it, whether I've been with a girl who's done that or I've seen it happen to a friend or I've just seen it happen in general. Mm -hmm. Like men and women. Yeah. But, you know, I think women can be just a little bit more defensive and be quicker to ghost if something reminds them of something in the past. Yeah. Right? So I just ask that you don't let that fuck up a great thing because then your ass will be back hollering at him, hip, talking about some hey, big head, four to ten years later when he doing this thug theasy. You know what I mean? What's up, big head? How you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Listen, you remember me? Yeah, so he don't... like that. Yeah, yeah. So just I just <laughs> ask that, you know, you just off bucks, let them know what it is. Be like, hey, I'm not all the way comfortable with this type shit. I'm getting loose to it. I'm getting used to it. I think you're someone that can help bring it out of me. I'd like to go down that journey if you'd like to accompany accompany me. And you know what, Dave? I think that what you said is now was like absolutely on point. 